Ladies and gentlemen, let's game into the Tricom video. Let's discuss GPU memory, shall we? Seems like a pretty good topic. While the bleeding edge cards like the Furies and the Titans will certainly be utilizing high bandwidth memory too, which, as you all know, can be stacked up to about 32 gigabytes for the very high end cards with an astounding and astonishing, a spiffing, if you will, one terabyte per second of bandwidth. That doesn't mean that all cards will be using that for the next generation and as 2016 rolls around, it's going to be a case where the high end, but not the bleeding end, needs still more memory bandwidth than GDDR5 can provide. Therefore, of course, enter GDDR5X. JDEC have finally published the specifications and it points to many things that we already knew about the new memory standard. Essentially, you're looking at double the bandwidth of the previous generation, GDDR5, but this is coupled with lower power consumption. Now, obviously, the amount of memory bandwidth which the card is capable of will ultimately come down to numerous things such as how aggressively they clock their chips as well as the maximum amount of bus width they decide to go for for example are they going to go with something more serene such as 128 bit all the way to something more insane like 256 384 512 but assume that well regardless you can go with 256 bit bus and have a rather impressive 448 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. This means that GDDR5 is going to be offering twice the per pin performance over GDDR5, which is pretty damn impressive. So for the sake of argument, we could be looking at 14 GBPS compared to 7 GB per GBPS. Once again, this is of course per pin. Now, a rather critical feature of uh, X. I'm just going to say 5 or X because keep consistently saying GDDR5 X is a bit of a mouthful. So let's just say 5 and X for my sanity, shall we? Not yours, mine. And mine is the one that counts in this video. So as opposed to the 32-bit memory uh, access, or say 32-bit wide memory access of 5, X doubles this to 64-bit, uh, which Theoretically, at least, it doubles the amount of memory bandwidth. The good thing, however, is that the voltages should remain the same in theory, but this is coupled with considerably higher density dims. This is something that Micron have been working towards for some time now. In fact, I'm going to read out some of the uh, quote from Mian Kudas. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. That is M-I-A-N and then surname is Q-U-D-D-U-S. GDDR5X represents a significant leap forward for high-end GPU designs. Its performance improvements over the prior standards will help the enable next generation of graphics and other high performance applications. Now it is worth noting, and this is out of quote, uh, not the not the quote from the board of directors chairman of JDEC, but instead my quote, that this is not going to be a, I guess you could say, a competing technology. JDEC realised that this is not going to be a situation where they're going to be, you know, offering this, or rather other companies are going to be offering this to compete with HBM2. As I mentioned at the start of the video, instead it's going to be very much a supplemental memory technology situations where you know you still need the ultimate amount of memory bandwidth for example like very high-end cards or you once again need very very low power solutions and uh, every last single watt of energy counts you're probably still going to find that solutions with HBM2 are the way to go and let's face it this is not going to be changing though there is still some questions which to be honest with you we're waiting for, for example, GDDR6, and there is some still a little bit of confusion whether 6 is going to be a thing or whether it was a PR, um, I guess you could say PR exercise, and we're instead just going to be seeing 5x, but for now at the very least, we're just going to have to wait for a formal announcement and then the products to start appearing on our shelves over the next several months and I say several months because it looks like of course they're going to end up being featured on such GPUs as NVIDIA's Pascal or indeed AMD's 
Polaris based GPUs when of course we finally see them in store shelves. I think it's going to be a nice evolution on in terms of components and performance and to be honest with you I'm quite grateful that we see a, uh, a next step in memory technology for non high bandwidth memory uh, solutions. It's not to say that HBM2 is bad or anything like that, but it is expensive. And because obviously the chips are going to be fairly limited in quantity, there is going to be that premium. What we don't want are situations where you've got that extra additional price. So I imagine the final lineup of Polaris is going to be, and by Polaris, you can also take Pascal or potentially even Volta for that matter with the same stride but something along the lines of the really low-end cards potentially gddr5 then you've got the mid-range to the higher range are probably going to be 5x and then finally the the really high-end cards are going to be of course high bandwidth memory too we're not quite sure where the the battle lines are going to be drawn as i've mentioned a couple of times now so once again taking modern cards let's say the the 900 series from nvidia as a reference point we could potentially say that the gtx titan would certainly have high bandwidth memory too potentially we would see the 980 and the 980 tie also feature high bandwidth memory too on potent possibly the 980 wouldn't but definitely the 970 i imagine would be featuring 5x and then maybe the 960 tie if there was such a card would probably be the, I, I guess you could say the break off point where we go to GDDR5 and then obviously as you start to go all the way down the lineup we would start to see then the emergence of GDDR5 and then X would of course disappear. It's a good solution. It, um, hardware itself on the rather the bus width for the cards can remain a little smaller because obviously you've got that extra memory bandwidth so you don't need to start drastically adding tons and tons of chips because the density is a higher and b you've got the additional speed so you can go with a, a smaller bus width and it does ultimately in that instance does start to save power and saves and saves a lot of board space as well which obviously means smaller gpus which is only a good thing because who wants to put in like a 24 inch behemoth into their pc obviously i might be slightly exaggerating on that maybe about 22 inches <laughs> anyway Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.